welcome back to a new episode of Gunpla TV. This is episode number 242. 242. And boy, we've got a good one for you today because we have, of course, the real grade unicorn. It's all built and finished. And yeah, this came out, what was it, two weeks ago? Yes, but, but I'm guessing you did it during break, huh? That's right. We were gone for a couple of weeks in Japan. They have a national holiday. Well, kind of like... Mm. Memorial Day a little Memorial bit? Memorial Day. Yeah. It's called Oban. It's actually, it's technically only like one day, I think, Oban. Oh no, see, Friday was Mountain Day. Mountain, yeah, so there's a couple holidays. <laughs> we got Mountain and Day. And then Oban was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Okay, so you have three days there. So there's a couple holidays all squished together, so you just get like a long break if you work here in Japan, because of course Japan is known for having such long working hours, so... They kind of put these holidays in there to to give the people more time off, I think. Yeah. So that's kind of nice. Actually, I was thinking about it because I'm from America. We're both from America, but here in Japan, we get a lot more Vacation. holiday time yeah. holiday time than we did in America, which was nice because May, there's like a week off. and I mean, we do, but we miss the winter big winter break and the big summer break if you're in school ah well, it's been a while since i've been in school <laughs> <laughs> gosh i remember what was that like a long time ago yeah two months were, two months two months of nothing well not compared to schools schools have like such really nice vacations only american schools if you're in school in japan you are really screwed i feel sorry for those kids because yeah. they do get like a month off in august but then it's all club and homework. It's club, and the amount of homework the kids here get during their break is just... It's like a literal fat stack of papers they have to go through yep. during this break. I feel so sorry for those kids. Uh, but anyway... <laughs> Speaking of break, what did Speaking you do break, during um, Obon? I went to Tokyo. I figured it was a good time to go, although I went right before a typhoon came. Oh, and so when typhoons come to Japan, they tend to push up a lot of really, really hot and humid air. So it was, it was a fun, miserable experience in Tokyo. But I did get a chance to go to Odaiba. And I went to Diver City, where, of course, they used to have that giant RX-78-2 Gundam statue. But that's gone now. And they're currently building the new 1-1 scale of the Unicorn. So I got to see them working on that. When I went uh, a few weeks ago, though, they only had, like, the the, the, the base pipes where the legs were. Although mm. I could see, like, some of the armor pieces they had off to the side. Oh, yeah. It wasn't installed yet, but I could see it off to the side. I did take a few pictures, so maybe, maybe we can get it added to the blog post for this episode. Now, is it going to transform? No, it's only oh. going to stay in destroy mode, I do believe. Well, at least destroy mode is exciting. That is exciting. Although some people, I the unicorn mode is kind of it's kind of like clean looking. It looks really nice, yeah. just a solid white. But destroy mode, of course, is the big bad. I'm going to destroy you, form. So that was kind of fun. And what else? Uh, Pokemon Go. Pokemon Go. Yeah. What did you end up getting into this <laughs> yeah. during the break? Uh, I'm sure any of you who follow the Pokemon Go updates know that there's been a lot of activity lately with the legendaries. Ah. You know, like Zapdos, Moltres, and so they were having some events in Tokyo. Okay. It's pretty crowded. Did you catch some legendaries? <laughs> I tried. <laughs> but just because you beat them in a raid doesn't guarantee that you can actually catch them. Right. Is it just like, is it just like it's a really small chance or only one person per raid can catch? Oh, Everyone has a chance. Everyone has a chance. But you get a set number of Pokeballs, oh, like based okay. on how you did in the raid. And mm. so you only have as many chances as you have Pokeballs. Oh, so it's like based on what you actually do in the raid. So like kind the better of, you do, yeah. the more balls you get. So if you like sit so. there and do nothing, then you can maybe <laughs> get like one ball. Maybe. I've never tried that before. Oh, but it'd okay. be an interesting test. Uh, but yeah, I mean, when you're fighting in that game, I don't. I still don't know what the heck to do. It's just like... What am I doing? Yeah, da, da, just, da, da, da. just tap it a lot. <laughs> just randomly tap it. And then swipe right or left to kind of dodge. It, it kind of works. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I couldn't figure that out. Like, hey, yeah, I'm, okay, I'm going to dodge. No, wait, I, I didn't dodge. Yeah. <laughs> it's very laggy on that. Uh, I'll have to try it someday. Of course, where we are in Japan is not very good for Pokemon raiding. Yeah. 
but smaller out here smaller area <laughs> a bit smaller but anyway during the break we did have two new things come in and we have the first one is the small little Ninpulse beam accessory set and this is an accessory set for another build fighters kit that came in which is the Ninpulse Gundam. Am I saying that right in Japanese? Ninpulse. Ninpulse. The Ninpulse Gundam. I think that looks pretty cool. Isn't it? Kind yeah. Of, kind of ninja ninja style with the samurai colors, I guess. I Mind if I see the oh, side? Oh, sure. Go ahead. It probably shows some of the accessory sets too, doesn't it? Oh, like if you buy this, then you can add it on too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the backpack part is really cool. How it transforms and can come up front. Right. That looks stylish. I love me some build fighters, so... Yeah. I'll be building this one, and we'll be back next week with a review of this one and the clear parts. But for today, we have... We are going to do a review, of course, of the RG Unicorn. RG Unicorn, it's here. It is finally built, and how does it stack up to all of the other many unicorn kits that have come before? Let's find out, shall we? All right, so I put this kit together, and first off, as far as construction goes, let me tell you, putting this kit together, I, it was really fun. It was kind of a treat to build this kit. I really enjoyed the build. It, was, it wasn't so hard. It's an RNG kit, but it wasn't, it wasn't so bad. And when you put the parts together, they all fit really well together. So I had no problem with, like, after I put stuff on, of stuff coming off. So that was really great, I have to say. And after I got this guy together, one thing I did notice, it is a real grade, but this guy is really, really, really kind of well put together. They did a great job of designing this guy, I think. He's not not loose. He's he, none of the parts are really floppy. They're it's 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 really how what should I say? What's the word I'm looking for? Uh really rigid. <laughs> I don't know if rigid is a great word to say. I mean it's it's nice it's nice and stiff, but he's durable. He's durable and I think that's good too cuz if you're going to be playing around with this guy, you're going to be doing the transformations and whatnot. And you don't want like a really floppy guy if you're going to be playing around with him a lot and and whatnot. But even though he is nice and stiff here, his movements, his what do you call it, posability the posability on this kit, I felt, is also pretty great. His arms have a wide range of movements that they can do, and a double-jointed elbow there that gives him a nice bend on the elbow there. And his legs as well, they can be, they can stretch out. You can, of course, do the splits. They rotate all around. And the knee, of course, has a nice double joint on it as well. The and because the it's so well done, it's the the fit is so perfect. It holds the pose, you know. Yes, that's another great thing to mention is because these parts are kind of like so well designed. It really and it's not loose or flopping around. He really can hold these poses however you want to pose him. He will be able to pose it in in that whatever however you do pose it. The foot has no joint on it really either, although later on you'll see the transformation. So it does kind of move, but there's no like toe, kind of toe joint that moves around. A little tiny bit, but that's more like the ankle moving around. But yes, if you guys are looking for a unicorn to pose in your favorite pose, and this might just be the kit, you will want to get. All right, so let's take a look at his weapons before we get into the transformation. So mm. I'm going to kind of not spend too long talking about all of the great, fantastic details that this kit has as well, which, as you can see, is really detailed and great. Now, he, right now he's armed with the beam magnum, right? Right now he does have his beam magnum on. So this is kind of cool. It's got some nice detail on there, and I believe it was... Uh, I do have, let me steal this here for a second. I have one from the HG kit here as well, so you can oh. kind of get a comparison between the two. The HG version is a bit shinier, the plastic. Well, the HG kit, this one is a bit shinier as well also because the HG kit I brought to compare, hello, oh. he is the titanium version of the HG destroy mode, so 
I think the gun, the gun for the titanium kits, they, they have kind of a more sparkly type of plastic. One thing you'll notice here is the ammo, this is all just like kind of two pieces sandwiched together with the, the barrel at the tip. But on the RG kit, I do believe, yeah, this, this, this part can come off if you want, and you can squish it down and make it smaller. So if you don't want to have it with the magazine posed in there, you can take that out and just convert it down as well, and you have more parts that move around. He has an extra grip on the top here. The handlebar, this was the HG kit had this as well, though. Most, most of the guns have that. But the gun is really well done, I feel. And also, let's take a look at the shield. Of This is, of course, in unicorn mode right now, so it's not transformed. We'll look at the transformations later. But yes, he does have his shield, and he also comes with two more weapons. Let's talk about the most boring of the two first. Of course, he's got his beam sabers, and you will get two pink beams. And of course, what's the next one we have here? The Hyper Bazooka. The Hyper Bazooka. So this is, let me see if I can put it back here. It's got the, the rockets, Bazooka rocket magazine that kind of, you can put in here and it just sticks in there. But this also looks pretty cool. Now the Master Grade doesn't come with this, I believe, but you do get it with the real grade. So that's a nice option. All right, so that's going to do it for the weapons. One thing I sh actually I, sh I should mention this also. You get a, you get a choice of three different styles of hands for whoops for each side there. So you have you have just regular open hands if you want. You have solid closed fists, and of course you have a open fist trigger finger that is good for holding weapons and you do get a left-handed version of that trigger one too so if you want to pose the bazooka in his left hand the rifle in his right hand you can do that all right so now let's get into the meat and potatoes so one thing a lot of people have been wondering about this when this kit was announced was oh man is the trans how's the transformation going to be it's an rg kit i know rg kits haven't been too very, haven't done very well when it comes to transformations and whatnot. Oh, it's going to be so finicky. It's going to be a bit hard. A lot of people were saying when this thing came out, but this they, I think they did a really good job of designing this kit. And I did the transformation after I built it, and it wasn't so bad. So let's get right into it, and let's transform him from this fabulous unicorn mode, and let's go into destroy mode. Although I'm limited on time, so I'm only going to be able to do maybe one leg on each side, but we'll take a look and see how the transformation goes. Alright, so let's remove his gun and shield there, and I'll just leave his hand off because he doesn't really need that at the moment. Alright, so the first thing we are going to do for the transformation on this kit is we are going to pop off his head, and we are going to remove the backpack. Actually, looking at this plastic, there's one more thing I did want to mention before I go into too much detail. I forgot to mention on the overview of this kit is, and I didn't mention it when I did that unboxing the last episode either, because I just didn't notice it at the time, but there's actually two different colors of white plastic in here. And it might be hard to see on camera, but once you're actually putting these parts together and you see them up close, you can you can really notice that. And that's, that's just another, I mean, that's something they do for the MGs and, of course, the real grade, so that's... Just something else that gives this kit a great look is just having that slightly different colored white plastic in here. Alright, so going back into the transformation, the first thing we it asks us to do is to come to the back here and there's a little tab that we are going to unlock and you're going to stretch up his torso so you can see he's going to start showing off the red destroy mode then you go to the back of course and you're going to just clip this back there's two different slots in here so the slot one slot is going to be for when it's in unicorn mode when it's squished down you can lock it in place when you pull it up there's another slot so you can lock it in place to show off the destroy mode features all right also we're going to kind of just expand out his chest just, you're just going to slide them out. So there you go. We're starting to see our destroy mode. And of course, we have everybody's favorite part. These little, I believe they were guns. They pop right out. 
There you go. All right, so also on the chest here we have these parts that just kind of slide down. And there you have it. That's all there is to do for the chest. That was pretty simple, pretty painless. Let's move on next. The manual calls for transforming the head from unicorn mode into destroy mode. So what you want to do first for this is these the side armor plates for the head. You just pop them off like so and you can see the clear pink plastic on the inside here and this is hinged like a hinge part this is actually from the b-runner there's like a, a b-runner part in here so these parts were already pre-attached to the, the abs or i believe the pink part was abs so they're attached to a different style plastic on there so you just pop those just kind of pull them out and then you take his face plate here and you just pull it straight down and the destroy mode face is going to be on the other side. So you're just rotating it around 180 degrees and you're just putting it back in place. And then you close those off. Of course, he's going to have his V fin for destroy mode. Now, for the per point of this video, I went with the, the transformable one that you can open and close. If you want to keep it in a fixed pose, they do give you two other options. So they have a fixed posed open V-Fin if you want to just install this one. And they also have just a fixed posed single uh, fin for the unicorn mode. So you have three different choices of what you want to do for the V-Fin on this kit. So for this one though, I just went for that one that lets you open it and close it. And even though uh, this one is the style that opens it and closes, I feel this one is not as bad as what I saw in the Master Grid. The parts line up pretty close, and when it's closed here like this, it looks pretty good, I feel. Yeah, I couldn't tell that it opened or closed at all right. when you had it on the desk earlier. I remember building the Master Grade one before, and just, I mean, out of the box, they didn't really line up so well, and it mm. just kind of looked so bad. But this guy looks, it don't, it looks pretty decent, I feel. Not so bad. I think they did a pretty good job with that. All right, so the side armor parts are going to just pop right back in, like so, and that's all there is to it for the unicorn mode. All right, so this is kind of a bit fragile part. I'm afraid of breaking the V-fin or whatnot. They show you in the manual just to put this right back on top of the thing once you're done with the head, but I will leave him off until the very end there. And we'll just go straight on to the arm next. All right, so for the arms transformation, the first thing you're going to want to do is, there's a tab here on the side. All you do is just open up that one first, and then this piece on the side, you just pull out to expose that. And then you come down here and you pull this down as well. And once, once you have this all done, and you can see all of the psycho frame in there, you just plop that one back up and you're set. That's all there is to do for that arm. Of course, we have to do the shoulder next. So for the shoulder, this just comes right off. It just rests on top, but it has a pretty good connection. What you need to do for this shoulder piece is you're going to open this up. You're going to kind of rotate this out a bit. So you can see that vent there on the side. When this sits on the inside, you won't be able to see that, but in Destroy Mode, you can see that vent because it kind of twists out. And you can pull, push that back down. It doesn't lock in place or whatnot. Need, this is just a rotating piece, so you can rotate it how you want, and that will be it for the shoulder. That's all there is to do for that. All right, so as we work our way down, Next, we are going to go to the waist unit. So we have here the side skirts. All right, so for these skirts here, what you need to do first is pop open, kind of just pull this one forward like so, and then you're going to slide it. There's a little sliding tab on here, so you can just kind of slide it, pop it out, and then just slide it open. It's kind of hard when you're doing it backwards. <laughs> there you go. So you get that pose. The real side skirts, this one just slides down. There we go. That's all there is to that. And then the backs, the back 
the back fin, not the back fins, the back, the back skirts, they have little jets on the inside. So you just open those up and that's all there is for the waist unit. All right, so the leg gets a bit more complex. So for this one, we'll start with the upper thigh here. All right, so what you're going to want to start with for this one is this side armor piece. You kind of just flip it out a bit. You flip it out, that locks it. And uh, I'm trying to remember here. Flip that one out, that's right. So then this should pull down, I believe. Uh, no, don't break on me. Uh, anyway, let's, let's get this one again. All right, so this should open up here. There we go. So yeah, you open this tab up. This has like a locking tab on the inside. So when it's when it's pushed down, it locks it into that into the unicorn mode. Then you pull it down to expose the clear cycle frame on the inside. And there's going to be like another tab on this leg, so you can close the skirt again. And then that locks it into place so that it's exposing the cycle frame. So that's all you do for the upper thigh there. All right. So for the bottom here these tabs, you are going to open them up. They also lock the legs in place, but once they are open, you can, whoops, pull it out, and that will start to show off more of the cycle frames there on the leg. Lock that place. All right, so the knee, this is the one, this is maybe the one part that I felt was kind of the most trickiest, the trickiest part of the transformation. All right, so for this, I'm just gonna leave that off for now. We're going to bend back that white piece, and then this piece, whoops, this piece here is going to pull out. Make sure I get this on right. Uh, work with me. There we go. All right, and then come here. We are going to pull off here. I found it easier just to take this off while we're working with it. Now the, we need to get this psycho frame part out here and I felt the manual was not very clear about like how you're supposed to do this. This this clear pink plastic part on the inside is supposed to come out here. So what I ended up doing, I just have, I keep a few of these, it's just a spare piece of runner that I cut off and used to kind of push other plastic pieces around because when you use something like this instead of like a tweezer or pliers, I don't have to worry about it damaging the plastic. So I kind of just like using this type of stuff. Plus it's free. So then I come into the back, the back leg, you can see that the pink psycho frame here. And then I just kind of push it out to where I need it. So there you can see now it's exposed out there, right? You can see that. So then the knee is going to come back here. Of course we need to have this white piece is going to stick out a bit. And and then that kind of just sticks back there. Oops, I'm losing my small white piece here. That's good enough. There you go. All right, so that was about it, I believe, for that knee psycho frame part there. Of course, don't forget to put this back on the thruster. If you do do it like me and take that part off. There we go. All right, so the foot, we also need to transform the foot. So for unicorn mode, of course, he uses a more standard flat foot, but when he goes into destroy mode, he, he equips his heels. So for the, the foot part here, we are going to, I believe, yeah, just pull out that so we get the, we can start working on his heel there. And then we are going to need to remove these pieces on the side of the foot. There we go, and we can kind of pull that down a bit. Now these armor pieces are going to rotate up. One thing I forgot, this skirt armor, this part, unicorn mode, it just kind of is down flat, but destroy mode, it needs to go up like so. So now this can rotate up. So this has a nice look, so it rotates up there, and after that is nice and good. 
you can put these pieces back on. There they go. And once you get this back on, it kind of locks this piece from coming back down. You know, it's funny, the frame looks pink on the runner, but it looks more like a red once you have it all assembled. Uh huh. Has it contrasts with the white parts, maybe? Yeah, or up against the black. Uh -huh. The gray of the frame. It's, yeah, it's got the darker, the darker stuff on the inside there. All right, let's put his head back on. All right, so uh, I don't have time to do the full transformation here, but you guys can get a good look. <laughs> <laughs> He's a little unbalanced now. He's a little bit unbalanced, but what can you do? But he looks pretty cool. Oh, I completely forgot about the backpack. This only takes two seconds, though. All right, backpack transformation oh, and the shield. Can't forget the shield transformation. All right, so the beam sabers, you just pull them out, then rotate them around, twist up. And his guns, not guns, but the, the there you go, the little thrusters expand out. Very nice. And that's all there is to do for the transformation on the shield. Not just, or not the shield, but that, the backpack. The shield is also super simple. Just pull those two out, pull down, bam, done. Very cool. Very cool indeed. Very lovely. There you go. He's like, help me. I can't finish my transformation. <laughs> <laughs> and there he is next to, next to the HG titanium HG finish. Kit. This is the titanium finish HG kit, but this is also in the destroy mode there. See? I can't do the full transformation, but you guys can kind of compare. Compared to the HG kit, the RG kit is really, really great. I have to say, so far this year, we are eight months into 2017, and there's still plenty of months left in the year, but this kit has to be one of, one of, or maybe the best kit of the year, one of the runners up. There's still more kits on the way, but I was really, really impressed with this kit if you guys want a unicorn you don't want to go all the way up to the perfect grade and maybe you you kind of want something better than an hg but you're not sure if you should go for the older quite a bit older i should say master grade then i really suggest the rg kit this was just a fabulous kit to build i can't wait to build it again it was just fun it's got great details the transformation is pretty painless. It's just a great kit all around. Highly, highly recommended. All right, so that's it for the real grade unicorn. What a fabulous kit. Yeah, it's really cool how it transforms. I mean, it takes it a long time, but it's worth the effort. Not as long as the old kits. It was, mm. it's a big, it's, they really did a good job of designing this one, I feel. So, but this is the first time we're building it because there's going to be like, the unicorn there's just so many different versions that they could do so we'll get like a banshee version probably at some point right. i mean who knows we're just guessing but just like the other unicorn kits the hg kits they had special editions and whatnot so i have a feeling that i will be building that kit a few more times in my life well the banshee's really cool <laughs> it is so. kind of a cool so well we'll have to see what comes out who knows the year's still young too maybe more is on the way well, speaking of kits on the way, I forgot to mention, next week we'll be getting the mega size unicorn. I'm looking forward to that one. Oh yeah, I forgot about that, that one. That one's going to be a nice big box. I it said it was going to be, what was it, like 40, over 40 centimeters tall? Oh my gosh. So it's going to be a nice big one, only in destroy mode, but I'm looking forward to building that one. That'll be coming next week. Awesome. <laughs> All right, I think we had some comments from the last week's episode. Oh, yeah. What do we have? Okay, so GMMM said, Todd, did you watch the Gundam Field Biters Battlelog episode with Char? What oh. were your thoughts on it? Yes, I did. Did you happen to watch it? No, I didn't. Uh, but it was only like a, one of those like web, web anime things, so it's only like six minutes long or something, but mm -hmm. it was really cool. I, I mean, it was, it's Build Fighters. It's not like really like a serious type gun damage show but right. i mean build fighters is just all about fun and this episode was just stupid fun and that's what build <laughs> fighters is so i loved it and i can't wait to watch more so wait what did char do in it did he actually 
control a gunpla? Yeah, well, the thing was is they had they had the traditional Build Fighters characters in there, and then um, I forget his name, but the, one of the guys that works for he's just like an engineer, and he does a lot of the engineering stuff, and he's like, hey, I came up with this new system that lets you use like a special avatar. Oh. So you so like exactly. they fight like these avatars versus each other. So like they use the avatar for Shar, and then like. The avatar for another character. I don't want to give away too much if you guys haven't seen it away. I don't want to give too many spoilers. But, like, they bring back these classic Gundam characters. So you're not watching the Build Fighters characters fight each other. Mm -hmm. You're watching Shar fight against other characters, which was just cool. It's just, I mean, it's just stupid fun. <laughs> yeah, that sounds really cool. <laughs> you should watch it. Everybody should go out there and check it out. I believe it's on YouTube, but I believe that's where I saw oh. it. Oh, wow, okay. Hmm. All right, next comment. On one of those slow weeks, you guys should both select an old kit, both the same, and have a sort of competition and let the viewers vote on the best one. One week it could be judging based on kit bashing, another week it could be the best custom paint job, etc. Alright, well... What do you think? We're always trying to think of, like, new stuff to do and whatnot. That sounds fun, so you never know. I mean, maybe someday. Yeah. Add it to the list. I'll stuff go easy that we on should you. do. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Challenge accepted. <laughs> we should get to sit on it too. <laughs> that would be interesting. Ship him a kit. Ship him a kit. Oh, maybe, maybe. Ideas, <laughs> ideas, so many ideas. All right, last one is from Bingo Bot. He said, Great show, and thank you for reading my comment. Really love Todd's idea of building all the HGUC kits. Can't wait to see Lindsay's kit review. Anyways, thanks to Anna, Ryan, Todd, and Lindsay for the behind the scenes hard work to produce Gumpla TV. Oh. You're welcome. Yeah, thanks for the <laughs> kind words. It's always great to hear good stuff. Of course, any comments are good. But yeah, that would be someday, hopefully, the entire line of HG kits. You gotta do it. <laughs> You've promised the audience now. You can't let them it. down. Uh, it's gonna take up so much room. Someday. <laughs> someday. <laughs> All right. Well, last week we did have a prize to give away, and I believe that was the gun cannon, the origin gun cannon. So here you go. Let me push past that to you for a second here. Uh oh. As I knock over the nipples. There we go. All right. So the lucky winner for the gun cannon, and this went to comment number thirty-eight. I believe it was. I forgot to write the number, but. Uh, I believe it was 38, thanks to the random number generator. And that is Enzin Modeler. And they said, those China guy, China, China guy eyes, spawn of sa. Ah, they don't finish. I want to have a RG Banshee with those armed armors, claw and railgun. Yeah, the Banshee has... Kind of like, not the Norn, the Norn has regular hands, but mm -hmm. the regular Banshee has like these cool kind of claw hands, so maybe it's a possibility someday. Who knows? But congratulations on your kit. Enzyme Modeler will be contacting you on Hobby Link TV, so look for our message. Alright, so for a new giveaway, it has been a while since... Orphans has finished actually. Build fight not build fighters, but uh, what do you call it? Iron blooded orphans. Iron blooded orphans, and we still have another Sid original, and this is the original Barbados Lupus, not the later Rex, but like the first one that came out when the series first started. So, but this kind of by itself is just a bit, a bit small. lonely. A bit lonely, isn't it? That's a good word. So. How about Mikazuka Agus's bust to go with it? We get a Ooh. nice busty set here. So you have a display stand for you your Lupus. You have a display stand. A very appropriate one. Although I don't think this one actually comes with a stand. It doesn't. No, this is just uh, oh, just just August by himself. Never mind. So you can pose him in front, or you can pick up one of the fancy display bases that we carry on HLJ.com. Hmm. That's a good idea, isn't it? <laughs> it is. But you have a chance to win this. And if you would like to win this, all you need to do is go to hobbylink.tv, episode number 242, and post a comment. Be sure to register on 
Hobby Link TV, of course. But yeah, just post a comment. And tell tell us what you think, and that's that's all you need to do. And I think that's about it for this episode, then, isn't it? Yep. All right, so let's wrap it up here. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Please remember we are brought to you by Hobby Link Japan. You can find us at hlj.com, and we are also on Twitter and where else? Facebook, Tumblr, <laughs> Facebook, and Tumblr. Instagram. And Instagram, is that it? I don't think we used to say Reddit, but I don't know. Yes, that's about it. That's about it. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks for watching, and we'll see you, see you again soon. See ya.